Jesus had been, he fed the 5,000 and now he's preached for the last few Sundays the bread of life and we're finishing it up. And he's going to have a hard say. He's going to say, my flesh is real food, my blood is real drink, and that's not all he's going to say. He's going to say he's going to raise, raise us up on the last day. And then we're going to find some people go away. Jesus is going to challenge the disciples that they're going to go away. And we're going to find out what all of that means here this morning. So that is going to be our focus here this morning. And then after, after the sermon today, we have installation. We have installation of the school board of Bethesda Lutheran School and Early Learning Center. And also we have the installation of teachers, administration, and staff. Of, of that as well. And so that's going to be happening here today as well. Welcome to all of our visitors that are here today. We are glad that you are able to worship with us. And we begin today with our first hymn. <laughs> Gives you all your sins. As a called and earning servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
guilty. I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth to the parable. I will utter great things, things from old, things you have heard and known, the things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. His power and the wonders he has done. The Hebrew statutes for Jacob and established the law of Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. And they would put their trust in God, and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer gifts of worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. He will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. 
Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle reading is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of life is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is Mockery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who would betray him? 
And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And before we sing the next hymn, if the children would come forward, please.
in Jesus' name. Right hand of 
God the Father Almighty. And not only does he confront them with that, but then he confronts them with, but some of you do not believe. And then, instead of, you know, it looks at the twelve who have stayed, and instead of thanking them, I'm glad you're sick, sick and with me, he challenges them and says, do you want to go away too? Well, maybe numbers don't always talk. And if numbers do talk, you know what? They always don't speak with wisdom. Because we've all heard the expression, if so-and-so is going to go jump, if somebody jumps, if everybody else jumps in the lake, are you going to go and jump in the lake as well? <laughs> It doesn't always speak with wisdom. The 60 who walked out as Jesus thought that they were so wise when they asked, how can? How can? How can he give his flesh to the life of the world? How can he give us his flesh to eat? But do you know the, the, the note of doubt in that question of how can? How can? Do you know that it sounds a lot like, did God really say? The same notes there. Did God really say? How can? There's a note of doubt. How can you as a, how can you as a church believe that Jesus is the Son of God? How can you as a church believe that Jesus is going to raise that body that's in the view, that's in the grave, on the last day? How can you believe that Jesus is the Holy One of God? How can you believe that Jesus gave his flesh for the sake of the world? How can you? And we're tempted when we hear that word, how can. We're tempted by the world to walk out, leave Jesus behind. Well, Jesus, he ignores the empty pews, and he says to the twelve that have stayed behind, and says, do you want to go away too? And Peter, thankfully Peter, he steps up and he answers on behalf of himself. He answers on behalf of the disciples. He answers on behalf of all of us today. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have come to know and believe that you are the Holy One of God. Peter hears it. He hears what Jesus has been teaching for this whole sermon the last few weeks about life. Jesus' words have been about life. Everyone else is, how can? Talking down. Jesus is talking life. He has that voice to listen to. See, there is only one voice that has come down from heaven to give his life for the sake of the world. There is only one voice that can give you eternal life. There is only one voice that promises to raise you up on the last day. There is only one voice that gives his flesh for the sake of the world. There is only one voice who, whose words are spirit and they are life. There is only one voice. And that voice is the voice of Jesus. That voice is Jesus Holy One of God. And when you have that voice in your ears, in your heart, you have nowhere else to go. Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Peter, the other disciples, like we, we have no place else to go. Because Jesus says, my words are spirit and they are life. That means that his words have the Holy Spirit. So that as you hear his words, his words go into your ears and down to your heart, and they create faith in Jesus. His words have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that hovered over the surface of the deep <coughs> at the beginning, brought about creation. They, they go into your ears and down to your heart so that you are a new creation in Christ. His words are spirit and life, so that they go into your ears and down to your heart and make you holy. Holy holy people of God as the Holy Spirit is holy. 
spirit and life. So that the Holy Spirit goes into your ears and down to your heart. So that he continually calls and gathers you to Jesus Christ. His words are spirit and life. As you hear our reading today, and you notice there's a lot of challenges to us in our reading. There are challenges by the world that we go away from Jesus. And there's a challenge by Jesus. Are you going to go away as well? Now, there is a difference between the two challenges. The world challenges us so that we fall away. Jesus challenges us so that we stay. The world challenges us so that we fall away from Jesus. Jesus challenges us so that we stay with Jesus. Jesus challenges us so that we cling to him who gave his flesh for us. He challenges us so that when things get tough, we hold on to that voice that promises to raise our bodies on the last day to be with him in eternity. He challenges us to just simply hold on to him and his words of eternal life. Hold on. And even though it doesn't seem like Jesus cares about numbers, Jesus cares about numbers. Seems that everybody just goes away, well, that's fine, though. He cares about the numbers. He, sees, he looks out and he counts how many are dying. You know how many of them? All of them. All of us. And so you know what he does? He gives his flesh. He gives his flesh for the sake of the 60, for the sake of the 12, for the sake of the 72, for our sake, for the sake of the world. He gave his flesh on the cross for you so that you live. You live now with words of eternal life. You live eternally with them. And on the last day, your body raised up forever. And so as you live your life, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged by the world to go away. Sometimes you're going to be challenged by Jesus and say, are you going to go away too? And know what our answer always is? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God be passed on your day. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as the last of the last thing. Will you please stand? And we'll join together and sing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under conscious fire, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Please be seated, and we will gather the
pray for your church gathered together in this place and throughout the world. Keep us faithful. Keep us safe from the evil one. Bless the word that is proclaimed here that it may always receive a fruitful hearing. Bless our military chaplains and missionaries as they proclaim your word, that they also may receive a fruitful hearing. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we pray for our country. Bless and protect and grant wisdom to President Biden and all of his advisors. Bless and protect Governor Noam and also grant her wisdom as she leads our state. Grant wisdom to our county commissioners, our mayor, our city council, our school board, and all who make and judge our laws, that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for all those who are in need of your care. We especially pray for Arlene Thomas, David Merrill, Joanne Berg, Ralph Stenslin, Harry Swain, and Carol Lorraine. Strengthen their faith that they may bear all crosses, sickness, and trials, with patience and trust, until you grant them deliverance, peace, and health. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the life which you gave to Herbie Gossel and Maria Maker, and their gifts and talents and family and friends. But now that you have called them to yourself, we pray that you comfort their families with Jesus, who is the bread of life, and who has promised, I will raise them up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, and your heavenly Father, you have made us the body of Christ in this place, and each of us has a part to play, and each of us are essential to it. So we thank you for, and pray for Angela, Shelby, and Wyatt and Ellen, and for Lenore and Nelson. Help them, be with them, sustain them, and help all of us to grow together in love for Christ and love for one another. Lord, in your mercy. As school starts this week, we pray that you would bless the Beds of Lutheran schools and Hot Springs public schools. Grant knowledge, strength, and wisdom to the teachers, administration, and staff, that our children may be prepared for life to serve you and their neighbor. And bless the students that it may be a year of living and learning and growing for them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for good and seasonable weather according to your will. We pray for those areas in our state that are affected by drought. Bring them and us rain in due season according to your will. We pray for our local businesses and industries. May they flourish according to your will. Help the unemployed to find work that will sustain them and their families. And help us to be faithful and find satisfaction in our vocations and bless our leisure. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you please be seated? And I would ask that all of those who are in the school board, if you are on the school board of the Venice Lutheran Church, would you please come forward? Dear friends in Christ, you have been chosen to serve our Lord as school board members at the Defense of Lutheran School. And as members of the Defense of Lutheran, and we, the members of the Defense of Lutheran Church, are thankful for your service because it is an, an important and vital role of our ministry to our church and to our community. Hear what the Holy Scriptures say about such service. Just as each of us has one body and many members, and those members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him lead diligently. 
If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Hearing the word of God, I therefore, in the presence of God in this congregation, ask you, do you accept the office and responsibilities entrusted to you? And do you, do you promise to faithfully carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord, and as much as you are able, conform your life to his word? If so, say, I do with the help of God. I therefore place you as members of the Bethesda Lutheran School Board in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Almighty and merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten you and strengthen you that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his holy name and for the good of his people. Go in peace. You may take your seats. And as they take their seats, I would ask that all the staff and teachers and leaders and, and, and administration of Bethesda Lutheran Church and Early Learning Center and um, and after school care, if you please come forward, volunteers. Dear friends in Christ, a new year for Bethesda Lutheran School is about to begin. The teaching ministry which you build is an important and vital part of the mission and ministry of the Bethesda Lutheran Church. And it is proper that as we begin, we do so by asking the Lord's blessing upon this work which we do and which we do. Here at Bethesda, we have the opportunity to fulfill in a special way that which Jesus commands in Matthew 19, when he says, Let the little children come unto me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom belongs to such as these. We do this as we train and teach our students in the way of salvation. Paul also speaks about this important work when he writes to Timothy, From an infant you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hearing this, in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you Are you ready and willing to carry out the teaching ministry at Bethesda Lutheran Church and Early Learning Center and after child care? If so, answer, I am. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those who serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and as much as you are able, adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. I, the help of God. I therefore install you as teachers, administrators, and staff at Bethlehem Lutheran School, Early Lutheran um, early learning center and after after school care in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I ask the, uh, now I have a question for the congregation. Members of Bethesda Lutheran Church, you have heard the promises for our teachers and of our teachers and staff. And so I now ask you in the presence of God, will you demonstrate to them your love? Will you uphold them with your prayers, encourage them with your words, and support them with your financial gifts? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. The Lord grant us strength to fulfill what we have promised, and with this grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Will the congregation please stand? And let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, we thank you for providing faithful people in your church to assist and support the work of proclaiming the good news of Jesus among us. Grant a rich measure of your Holy Spirit to these your servants. Strengthen them and bless their labors. Give to us willing hearts to serve them that they may be encouraged 
and empowered to do this worthy task. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now go in peace and joy. And the Almighty, the most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you. 